Woodwood, smoking all my dragons, divine righteous, almighty greats, overachieving, never slacking. And this is how 6 9 the rapper, outsmarted his enemies. He will win, who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Sun Tzu. Now, when we talk about 6 9 right, so much speculation comes with that name. So much from whether you want to go a snitch or you want to go a hit making machine, a, a, a problem starter. So many things come to mind. Somebody who blew up with the hit song Gummo and just went viral for being a alleged gang member and also just stirring up the pot constantly, constantly calling out other rappers, other celebrities, and staying in a big pool of drama. But the question most people wanna know is, how did he do it? How did he survive all those beefs, those major beefs, calling out so many artists that are quote unquote dangerous people? How did he do it? Well, let's take it back to the beginning. In 2017, 6 9 catapulted into success with his hit song, Gummo, which was super catchy to the masses. If the uh, plucky got the stiffy uh, that just rung all in people's heads. The song Gummo amassed over 29 million views on YouTube in just a month's time, and it hit the Billboard Hot 100. So this rapper who has all these face tats, He's waving this red flag around. He's throwing up gang signs. It was only natural that a lot of problems were going to come with that, especially with him being Hispanic in a so-called black gang. You know, people were going to have a lot to say about this, which caused a lot of controversy. Now, rapper 6 9 was already having some trouble with another rapper named Trippy Red about beef and his affiliation with Takashi 69 and it just was not going good. Takashi ended up dissing him and this just started going back and forth and then Takashi just went all out. Now a lot of people that personally knew 6ix9ine was saying that he was a good kid, you know, he was just using his gang as pretty much a, a whole mimic in order to have this character Think like WWE for the fans to fall in love with, to just catapult him into success, which was working. But the thing was, these guys were actually real gang members, real street guys, which ended up leading him into real legal problems. Now, you would hear behind the scenes about a lot of things being done in the name of 6 9 and 6 9 would constantly go on and just let people have it and say, we're doing this, we're doing that. Law number seven of the 48 Laws of Power. Get others to do the work for you, but always take the credit. Never do for yourself what the efforts of others can do for you. Use their wisdom and knowledge to further your own cause. Now, this is not me demonizing anyone because 6 9 was clearly taking care of a lot of these guys and a lot of their family and was expecting a certain amount of loyalty back and trust was broken a lot of people was going behind backs but this is why my message personally to anyone you have to understand that when you're dealing with people from the streets everybody's playing 48 laws of power everybody is playing art of war it's really no honor amongst thieves. And guys, you have to understand that. 6 9 had this comical way of roasting his enemies, but at the same time, he was still spitting a lot of truth to the youth about being different and being accepted and things that people really needed to hear, which was at the same time getting him loved by many people, even though he was hated by many other people. Now, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting, according to the art of war by Sun Tzu. So when you would see 6 9 do things like pop up in Chicago's O Block at a certain time, and he would, he would uh, diss enemies that he had from there, and then he would disappear and taunt them, and he was literally playing the art of war. He was literally 
playing Art of War. He knew he didn't want to go and get into no shootout or get his hands dirty or do anything crazy like that. But at the same time, he was going to defeat his enemies through trickery. The Joker. Now, we all love the Joker for a reason. Now, the Joker will give you the hard, ugly truth about society, and then he'll take you out. And the thing with 6 9 is, yeah, he would do this trickery, all these things like that. But at the same time, he would go feed the homeless in that area. He had so many people watching. You have to understand how many people were connecting to that. 6 9 was also dropping songs in Spanish too, with him being Mexican and Puerto Rican, and him going out to Mexico and feeding families. You have to understand the type of respect came with that. People are really out there living in poverty. So that pretty much just took over all the trickery that he was doing. Not only was he exposing his enemies, not only was he dissing his enemies, not only was he purposely staying out of harm's way while he did that, but he was also giving out actual messages. And he was actually feeding people who were actually going through poverty and people around the world were seeing that so when they would go back and they would hear his enemies speak and his enemies call him fake well they're looking they're like wow he just fed a whole family they're not seeing his enemies do that they're hearing six night exposing things about the industry you know certain things you have to do and they're like hold on they're not seeing his enemies do that when they're listening to his enemies and they're hearing, oh, we're real, we're street guys, we're really street guys, they're realizing 6 9 is actually having a bigger purpose, actually doing more community and humanitarian work, which was getting him support on a whole nother level while these other guys were still just talking about fake and real. 6 9 was able to tap into the hearts of the people that were his fans by speaking about judgment, by telling people, look, I got rainbow hair, I got all these tattoos, I look this way, who cares? Don't judge people. And that was really, really getting to people's hearts, especially the generation we live in, where kids are walking around and just feeling depressed and unhappy all the time. They didn't care if he was actually a real street guy. At least most of them didn't. It was the fact that he was entertaining. But on a side, he was actually doing the humanitarian work on a big level. It's like, look at WWE, for example. We don't care if The Undertaker isn't really, you know, walking graveyards or if, the you know, the cane isn't really... Uh, psycho like we don't we just there for the entertainment and he was able to tap into that through his character so people didn't care if some quote-unquote gangster rapper would get on live and talk about how fake 6ix9ine is because right after 6ix9ine would just post a video giving a family 1 million pesos and the art of war it also says if you know the enemy and know yourself you need not fear the results of a hundred battles 6 9 clearly knew his enemies and he knew the in and outs of the music industry. So he knew exactly how to deal with his enemies. He did his homework. He knew exactly how fake everything was. And he just didn't care. And that's why people love the Joker because the Joker finally said, you know what, enough is enough. I don't care, I'm gonna be crazy. I'm gonna do what I want. And that's the character, the persona, that is very similar to 6 9 Completely unpredictable, and people fell in love with it. They started to itch for more. They couldn't wait for what he was going to drop next. And they ended up riding with it, because inside of everyone, people have that in them. That, that not caring that they just want to let out. So when they see somebody just not care, not care about judgment, not care about anything, but at the same time still giving back. And then on top of that, with him also knowing another language and also, like I said, being Mexican and Puerto Rican, he was able to open up 
such a big fan base with him that even after his trial and after he was labeled a snitch, they still loved him. The people that were in poverty still loved him because he connected with them, which is what a lot of his enemies just didn't understand. I just seen a video with him in Africa. If he wanted to, he could just make Spanish music and never have to really rap again. He outsmarted his enemies. He knew who he was and he played his cards how he needed to play them to be in an even bigger position on his own than he was before. With that being said, guys, make sure you hit that like, that subscribe, and that notification bell for more. Make sure you share this, and I'll be back with more soon. Much love, y'all.